Hey, what is going on YouTube? Mechor Games here today, coming at you with a deck profile of a Butterspy Chaos Rank 4 deck. Um, this deck was inspired by a friend of mine who wanted to make a good build of this deck that, you know, could remain roughly competitive, that could stay, you know, and actually fight a comeback against meta. Now, I'm not going to say that this deck is competitive because it's not, but it does hold a relative chance if you know, you can play this deck the right way and play it the way it's intended to be played. So, start off, we've got three copies of Photon Thrasher. Absolutely amazing monster for rank 4s. Good 2100 beat stick. They can be used for a little bit more field control and actually be able to uh, be used effectively just alone. Two Shining Angel. Um, there's actually a combo that you can do with Shining Angel. Shining Angel, when it's killed, you get to special summon a light monster. So you can go into himself, into himself, and then into this monster. Fly on Papillon. So if you're stuck with this on board and your opponent doesn't kill it because they don't want you to go plus and you have a Dark Hole in hand, you can just Dark Hole the board, clear the field, and then go plus off Papillon and get into a Butter Spot. So he's pretty cool. And he is a summonable target from Shining Angel. So Shining, Ang so Shining Angel pulls you into this, which then pulls you into these. Your Swallowtail Butter Spy. I did have Swallowtail at 2 and 2 Morpho, but we don't get to ever really use Morpho's effect, and sometimes you do get to try out Swallowtail's effect, sometimes you do get to use Swallowtail, but not very often. But he is a lot stronger, 1800 compared to 1200. I'm pretty sure you're going to want to play more copies of this, because I had 2 and 2 and just felt that 3 of this and none of the other one was better. Two Summoner Monk. Oh, also the fact that the Swallowtail is a warrior, level 4, so it is searchable. But yeah, we have two Summoner Monk. Um, Summoner Monk is really good. You can bring out any one of your monsters from the deck. We are running double Kage to Kage. It's searchable. It's used for rank 4s. I thought about bumping this to 3 because I never saw it when I needed it, but I did try it at 3 for a bit and it just got way too cloggy. Didn't really enjoy it, you know, <laughs> at more than 2. One BLS. Um, I still want to make room for Chaos Sorcerer, but I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that yet, because the deck is kind of, you know, packed on room. Um, one Dijin, release her rituals, uh, just to Dijin lock with Colossus to search out, you know, your Necro Cycle. So, that's all the monsters of the deck. So, like I said, we got a Dijin lock, and it's pretty easy to get into the Dijin lock with this deck build. So, for our spells, we are running. Triple upstart, obviously for speed, just because speed and consistency is pretty much needed in just about every deck. And I know some people are gonna be gaming gear to disagree. Well, you're dumb if you disagree. So, three rota for search power consistency gets it can search you into your Dijin lock. It can pretty much like if you get a rota in hand with like either photon thrash or another level four. Like, if you get the ability to go Levalval Chain and you have Rota in hand, you can search for Colossus and make first turn to Genlock. One Lord of Darkness, because you do have a fair amount of darks, and draw power is key. Foolish Burial, just ditch your Dijin to the graveyard. Pretty standard, pretty staple in this deck. Uh, if you draw this and you don't, you know, well, there's a certain monster that you just really don't need, you can, I like, if you have Summoner Monk, you can just pitch this with Summoner Monk if you already got your Dijin in the graveyard. Or just pitch a useless monster for a little bit more deck speed. Of course, our Necro Cycle to Dijin Lock. One Regeki. Two Dark Hole. And Book of Man are Dijin outs. So, that's, uh, that's always a thing. Okay, so that's the spells. So now for the, our traps. Of course, got Compulse. Ring of Destruction. Solemn Warning, Torrential, Bottomless, Vanity, and of course your Triple Fiendish Chain. So my pr my main standard lineup of traps. Fiendish Chain is just way too good. It, it's proved to be far uh, far too useful. So for the extra deck, Kagito, well, sorry, King of the Farlands to search out Kagito Kage, getting ahead of myself. Levival Chain, Dump that Dijin, Make First Turn Dijin Lock, Diamond Crab King, 
really good solid defense monster and offense monster. This allows you to play both roles. Uh, Exit and Knight. Exit and Knight is really strong, really good rank four nukes boards. You use the you actually use this a lot in this deck because a, a lot of decks that get a lot of search advantage, you really have the advantage of being able to take a hold of Exit and Knight and being able to take this card into advantage. So he's probably an MVP in this deck because you don't always have a lot of stuff on board. And this guy, you know, if you can make him in a bad situation, it just allows you to rebalance the game. Um, Castell, X is a brilliant dragon. Double one hundred one. Currently double cowboy. Looking for a violent omega because I have had a chance where I have been able to make omega. Thinking about using evil swarm nightmare, but I'm not sure. Currently Utopia, Blade Armor Ninja. I mean Gaga Samurai because Gaga Samurai is Blade Armor Ninja with a with a decent defense effect. Um, Foot on proper operative. But Improper Operative is actually the only way we would have been able to take advantage of Morpho's effect of being able to use its effect to make it lose a thousand attack points, but we never we never really had Papal Operative on the board with Morpho Butter Spy. Steel Storm Roach, and of course Black Ship of Corn. So, like I said, this deck it's not it's not designed to be competitive at all. It really isn't, but it's just a really, really good, fun deck to play around with if you're looking for a way to, you know, if you want to experience a fun deck that can stay competitive without being overly competitive, then this is definitely a really good deck for that. This is a deck that I love, and, you know, I've been playing decks like this for many years and it's just really a lot of fun and the fact that we have access to some pretty powerful stuff that can be used in rogue decks like this is pretty good pretty cool and it actually allows you know rogue decks to roughly stay competitive like the whole you know every deck being able to you know go digit lock it it allows decks like this to be able to take advantage of main deck cards as like rota rota searches out some of your main deck cards, as well as this. So it's an easy access to us being able to stop our opponent from special summoning and still be able to make our deck playable. And to do it in a fun way. You know, cards like this really make rogue decks, you know, actually roughly, you know, competitive, being able to dig unlock. Things like BLS being able to be used in random decks like this. BLS is a big powerhouse, just like Chaos Sorcerer. These cards are game-changing cards that, you know, allow a lot of crazy things to, you know, happen. A lot of crazy plays to be made. And that's one of the reasons why this deck is good is because we have access, you know, to some of that tech that allows decks like this to be crazy, creative, but yet still be able to maintain a degree of balance. And that's why I like this deck. It has a very good degree of balance and allows the deck to, you know, like I said, be able to compete against stronger decks without really following into, you know, that defined definition of, you know, what is meta. Meta is a way of saying a deck for douchebags, pretty much. This deck is definitely not a deck for douchebags. It's I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for saying it's a deck for du well, saying that you know Meta's decks for douchebags, but if you think about it and look at it from a crazy perspective, it is. I took this deck to locals, three and two at locals with this deck. Like decks like this are so underrated; they can perform well and be able to perform competitively without the degree of being douchebaggy to the point where you don't want to play against it, and that's kind of like what Necroz right now has become. They've become that douchebag deck no one wants to duel against. You know, same with Shadals and stuff like that. So, to be able to make a deck like this that can stay fun, stay competitive, stay useful, do the same things that it needs, will do the things it needs to do, and do it competitively, 
and do it strong enough to actually make an impact on the game and actually be able to hold its own against better decks. I tested this many times against my Yosenju, and my Yosenju deck is a really good strong deck that I use a lot in the meta, and it beats a lot of the meta. This beat it quite often. This beat Necros. This, you know, this deck can beat, you know, big potential decks that have a lot of power. Decks like this are so underestimated and so underrated because it doesn't have that meta aspect to it. And that's why decks like this get countered out. So let me know what you guys think about this deck in the comment section down below. Let me know how you feel about this deck in my you know, little discussion on decks like this. You know, random ass odd decks that are fun but can stay roughly competitive. Let me know how you feel about that. And I will see you guys later. <laughs>